Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture I want to go over elementary matrices. So let's see what elementary matrices are. An elementary matrix is a matrix that's the result of a single elementary row operation to i n. What's the meaning of that? You take the, LM, the identity matrix and you do one of those three row operations and the result will be an elementary matrix. So the start is always from the, the identity matrix and one row operation and you're going to get an elementary matrix. Here I put it for you, the types of elementary matrices, you take I n, you permute two rows or you interchange two rows, then that's going to give you an elementary matrix. You take I n and you multiply your row by a constant and that's going to get the result is an elementary matrix. You take I n, you multiply your row by a constant and add it to the other row, to another row, and the result is going to be an elementary matrix. So we have three types of elementary matrices. Now, there's a theorem here. If E is an elementary matrix from I M, then E times A, E is M by N, A is M by N, is going to give you a matrix B, M by N, where B is a matrix resulted by performing the same row operation to A. So I'm going to do an example for you. You're going to see. But before doing an example, let's show that here. I take I M and I do a row operation, elementary row operation, and I get E. If I want to go from A to B directly, I can do the same row operation. Now, to get this, the B, what we can do, we can take A and multiply it by E here and must be multiplied on the left. Definition, if you have the matrix A and you can multiply that by elementary matrices and you get always to the left and you get B, what we said, B is set to be, again, ISTB stands for is set to be row equivalent to A. So another theorem, elementary matrices are invertible and the inverse of an elementary matrix is an elementary matrix itself. So the two, three row operations, you start with IN, you interchange two rows or permute two rows, you get E. And if you do the same thing to IN, then that is also going to give you the inverse of E. And if you want to make sure that's right, E times E inverse is going to give you IN. Second row operation, you start with I n multiply your row by a constant. Again, that's going to change that row and you get an elementary matrix. To find the inverse of that, you can take I n and multiply that by one over alpha or one over that constant. And that's going to give you the inverse of that matrix. To check if it's right, if you multiply E times E inverse, you are going to get the identity matrix. Operation number three, you take alpha times R, Ri plus Rj equals to Rj, take a row, multiply it by a constant, add it to another row. And if you want to get the inverse of that, you can take I, multiply it by negative alpha plus the same row, and that's going to give you the inverse. Again, if you want to double check, if you multiply E times E inverse, you will see you're going to get I. Let's go over this example. I took this two by two matrix, one, two, three, four, and I took the identity matrix. Now I want to make that zero, so I do negative three R1 plus R2, and that's going to change R2. If you do that, you get zero and negative two here. Now, if you do the same operation to I, negative three times R1 plus R2, and you change R2, you get negative three and one here. This is an elementary matrix. I call that E1. 
Now, if I take E1 and multiply it by the original matrix, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, you are going to get 1, 2, 0, negative 2, which is the same matrix we got by doing the same row operation. So basically, if I want to get two ways, you can get this matrix. One by doing the row operation directly to A, and the other one is finding the elementary matrix for that from I and multiply that elementary matrix to the left of A and you're gonna end up with the same result. Now, let's continue. I wanna make that one. So I wrote negative one over negative one half R2 is gonna give me change R2. So that's what we get zero one. Now, if we start with I, always start with I. Do not start with the resultant matrix from here. So always with I, remember. Negative 1 over 2, R2. If I change R2, so I becomes this matrix. And I call that E2. And if I take E2 and multiply that by the matrix we got, then if I, I did the multiplication here, try to do that by now. I'm sure you know how to multiply matrices. You get one, two, zero, one. And that's the same matrix we got here by doing the row operation to this matrix. Next, let's just uh, make this zero. How can we make this uh, actually, but we got that. If I wanna make that zero, I have to do negative two R2 plus R1 and that's going to change R1. And if you do that, then you're going to get 1, uh, 0, 0, 1, which is the identity matrix. I'm going to start again with identity matrix and do negative 2R2 plus R1. And that's what you get. And again, if you take E3 and multiply it by the last matrix we had, you are going to end up with the identity matrix. What's the conclusion? If I take A and multiply to the left, E1, E2, and E3, I end up with I. Now, what we can do, if we take the inverse of E3 and multiply both sides by the inverse of E3, this becomes I, and we're left with I times E2 times E1 times A right here. And on the, the other side, we're left with E3, inverse of E3 times I. If we multiply by the inverse of E2, then this becomes I. And uh, what's left, again, both sides. Did on uh, both sides. And if you do that, so you get E inverse 2 times E inverse 3 times I. Then finally, you can multiply by the inverse of E1. And at the end, what's left is just A, because this becomes I. And I put it here, the final answer. A can be written as E inverse one times E inverse two times E inverse three times I. We can take I out because I, if you multiply I by any matrix, you get the same answer. Or you can say A is E inverse one, E inverse two, and E inverse three, you multiply these two. Sometimes they don't wanna use the inverse sign. So you're going to see A equals to E1 times E2 times times E3. Because these are inverse of elementary matrices are themselves elementary matrices. So now with the inverse, when we, I talked about inverse, uh, I said, if let's do some examples of that. I start with I, I, that's a two by two matrix for you to see this. It's much easier with a two by two matrix. If we switch two rows or permute two rows, we get that matrix, that's E. Now, if I do the same thing, we said when you permute two rows to find the inverse, you do the same operation. If I permute two rows, I get also the inverse of E. If I multiply E by its inverse, that means that matrix times that matrix, you'll see you're gonna get the identity matrix. You can do this, the same thing with the other two operations I said to find the inverse. So 
basically if I go up, this is I did number one for you. So you can try number two and three, you'll see you get the same thing. That's how you can find the inverse of that matrix or using the formulas for the inverse or the row operations for the inverse. Now, there are some equivalent conditions. Please be careful of those. If A is invertible, then A can be written as the product of elementary matrices. Here, A was invertible. So this the matrix we had was invertible. At, at the end, we wrote that as the product of elementary matrices. So that's the two, these two conditions are equivalent. A is row equivalent to I. We have seen this because if you start row reducing A, then you're going to end up with the matrix, the identity matrix. If you have this system, AX equals to B, this system will have a unique solution. And you can find that solution. Please check my last videos. X can be written as A inverse times B. And finally, when you have the homogeneous system, AX equals to zero, A has, this will be, have only the trivial solution where X size are equal to zero. Also adding to that, which we're gonna see in the next videos, the determinant of A is not gonna be equal to zero. That's gonna be probably the sixth condition just remember that. And I think that's good enough for this lecture. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on my next, uh, next lecture.